Yeah, yeah, what up my peeps? Two L's up, salute. Welcome back to another edition of Life and Times of Rack Low. Yeah, yeah, but as far as low life's coming together officially to form that real powerful network, that real powerful team, it all started with me living in both places originally. First, I lived on St. John's between Rochester and Buffalo Avenues. After I, you know, I moved from St. John's, me and my moms, my father, my brothers and sisters, we ventured out to Marcus Garvey Village in Brownsville, Brooklyn. You know, it's like it's like the I would say it's like the the next neighborhood over from um from Crown Heights where I was living on St. John's, right? So pretty much just being around the money takers on St. John's, um, being a young hustler with Frizz, A V Rock, Rich, um, Keefe, just being like young kids, man, out there just like being on a prowl and um, having the urgency to get money. At this time, it wasn't even about clothes. It was just about us having money in our pockets. And um, that's how it pretty much started for me on St. John's in the early stages. I was the only low life in low life history that lived in both places. Once I got to uh, Marcus Garvey, you know, you know, I was, I, I was still a young kid. So I was growing, developing, um, meeting new people, um, developing relationships with other kids that was also living in Marcus Garvey. And, and then when it got to a, a certain point, whereas um, I got to an age where it was about the money, that's when, you know, the boosting um, came back into effect for me as far as me being ready, um, being at an age where um, I, I could make the decision to um to go on missions to go on me eyes you know to regulate you know to put myself um in tight situations in order for me to uh to survive and have the things that i wanted so that's that's pretty much how we formulated originally you know what i mean because like i said you know i lived in both places and i pretty much wanted to unite both um crews to create like this one powerful force you know, and that's when we all came together in 1988 and it was officially titled Low Lifes. You know, prior to that, you had um, USA, United Shoplifters Association, and you also had um, Ralphie's Kids. So, you know, we pretty much came together and formed that bridge and we became one, one nation. You know what I mean? We just started regulating from there, 1988. As far as attending boosting sprees with us, it wasn't for the weak. Yo, you had to have heart. You know what I mean? Because, like, the consequences were so stiff. You know, like, at any time, at any moment, on any day, you know, you could have been facing some real, real heavy consequences. Like, for instance, you know, like, going on to Mia, you know what I mean? You could have been going to jail for that day. You know, you, you could have been going to jail for what? The, t the time could have, the, the time varied. It could have been a week, a month, two years, five years, depending on the offense, you know, and the, the crime that was committed. You could have been hitting Rackets Island. You could have been, um, you know what I mean, on, on your way to uh, spending time in a state penitentiary, you know, in a state prison because the offenses and the charges, and it, it was so serious that, you know, you could have put yourself in a situation where, you wasn't coming home. And especially if you had um, a criminal record or you had past offenses that were similar and, um, and a judge kept seeing your face and you kept appearing in the justice system, you know, and, and sent you bookings and all that on a regular basis every other week. Yeah, you know what I mean? After a while, you, you was probably heading up north, you know? And then, you know, another, another thing that could have happened, you could have been going to the hospital because like being on Mia's, it was crazy dangerous. You know, like just imagine going on Mia's, running up in a store, you breaking windows, you shattering glass, you pushing people, you, you know what I mean? You carrying racks of coats, racks of polo gear, um, people getting trampled, stampeded. Like it was crazy chaotic. So it was chaotic. The behavior was definitely reckless and on many occasions, it was detrimental 
it was definitely detrimental um, for you as a person, but also for the people that was, you know, that was around you. You know, it, it was really, really crazy. So you had to be on point and you just had to know that if it ever went down, you was going all out. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, the offenses were serious. The rush was serious and heads was hungry for the fashion but especially especially hungry for that money we orchestrated three mias per day and that's how structured and organized our actions were you know like just as teenagers um wanting wanting to be fly wanting to get money wanting to be talked about wanting to be um seen you know, um, wanting to be historical and wanting to be original and wanting to be different. It was a Mia at 9 a.m. And then we had a Mia like towards like early afternoon, like like between 12 noon and like 1 p.m. And then the third Mia for the day, it was like, uh, the uh, you know, the rush, you know, like the five o'clock rush. Like so it was like 5 p.m. To like to like 6 p.m. like in that in that time frame like right when the stores was about to close up and shut down we put that final rush in on you know what i mean on on a regular basis so it was like three mias per day and um yeah so like if, if you came on a mia in the morning and got super super paid you know um you you had the opportunity to hit two more mias so but let's just say if you was busy that day or you you just couldn't you know what i mean be a part of the activities early earlier on in the day and let's just say that you missed the first mia right heads heads went out came back you know what i mean we we geared up read up you know what i mean um gathered up with more heads we went on a second mission a second mia right and let's just say you missed that mia and then you know we went on the last mia like around five o'clock p.m like towards like the evening time so you probably caught that Mia and that Mia, you probably got so, so paid that the other two Mias didn't even count. That's how serious, serious it was. You know, that's how serious going on Mias was, you know. So let's just say hypothetically um, on the first two Mias, heads caught like um, mad polo stuff. They caught mad guests. They caught Nordica. They probably even ran up in... Um, the Gucci store. Let's just say they ran up in a Gucci store. But on that third Mia, Heads ran up in a Pele spot. And Heads was able to come out with like 10 Pele's each. See, the score was bigger. And you know what I mean? It was definitely, you know what I mean, available for you if you was ready, willing, and able to get busy. How we used to meet up every day to go on a boost and spree. So, yo, this how it went down. You had the lowlifes who lived in Marcus Garvey Village. And then you had the lowlifes that represented St. John's SJP, right? So the main, su the main subway station that we used to utilize to even venture off to go on missions in Mia's was Utica Avenue train station. Now at Utica Avenue train station, there's two trains. You know, on the lower platform, the bottom, bottom platform that we call it the lower platform. It's the number four train, which is the express train. And then you have the number three train, which is like a local train. But it comes from East New York through Brownsville. And, you know, it also uh, comes through Crown Heights. And, you know, as it comes from Brownsville, you know, the first stop in Crown Heights, I would say, is Utica Avenue. So, meeting up every day, the boosters from Marcus Garvey, which is in Brownsville, they would actually take the number three train. Like I said, it was three Mias, so whatever information they had as far as what time we was, like, linking up for the Mia, they would pretty much um, take the number three train from Rockaway Avenue Station, Rockaway and Livonia, and um, they would take the number three train and, you know, they would take the three train uh, to, you know, they, they will pass Saratoga, right? They will pass Sutter Avenue. And after Sutter Avenue, the next stop is Utica. And at Utica, as the Brownsville boosters was, you know, on the three train, you know, coming, you know, to, uh, to Utica Avenue, 
the boosters from SJP St. John's will be there waiting for them. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's how it went down. So, you know, for me, you know, like since I lived in, in both places and I was pretty much the catalyst as far as linking up, you know, having them link up every day, you know, I could have been in either place. I could have been at Utica waiting for the boosters from, you know, Marcus Garvey Village, or I could have been with the boosters, you know, from, you know, Brownsville, Marcus Garvey, and we could have been making our way, you know, to meet up with the SJP boosters, you know, um, at Utica Avenue train station. Now, check this out. Once we linked up at Utica, you know, of course, you know, we, uh, we gave each other love, you know, pounds, you know what I mean? Threw the L's up and all that. Once we did that and it, you know, everybody got off the three train and we all, you know what I mean, got on the platform. You know, it, it was many days where um, we didn't even rush to go on the media. We probably just posted up right there in the train station and just had a crazy, crazy classical photo shoot. Y'all probably see some of the photos floating around out there now, you know what I mean, with us posted up. In Utica Avenue train station, you know, a lot of those days was probably prior to the Mia, the Mia kicking off, right? So yeah, so after we would get on the platform and do what we did on the platform, we will all just get on the number four train. You know what I'm saying? Now the number four train, that's the express train. Now when we get on the number four train, we 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 can go anywhere pretty much in Manhattan. You know, like for instance, some of the places we would take the four train to. As far as like going boosting would be um, like we would go downtown Brooklyn, like on Fulton Street. They had like an a &S, which eventually turned into a Macy's. But they just had like a, a whole, a whole sort of like a whole district or a whole area of just different, different um, shopping stores. And we just would catch mad, mad wreck from um, all those different stores that was down there. And then, you know, the four train, we could have went to Canal Street. We could have went to uh, 42nd. We could have made our way to 34th. We could have went. And this is crazy. When we took money, and like I said, it wasn't always just about polo. So that number four train, that number four train really, really took us really, really far. It took us to really diff a lot of different, you know what I mean, ill places. Like I remember taking a four train and we used to go to Fordham Road. Now on Fordham Road, they had mad different stores. Like, they didn't have, like, polo and all that. But they had stores that we would hit up for, like, merchandise we was able to sell in the hood. You know, because, like, when we, one thing about us, when we went on Mia's, we would always try to, like, get mass amounts of product because we would take the product back to the hood. And we had customers waiting to purchase the product from us on a wholesale rate. So it was crazy. So... We used to get busy, so yeah, we, we would get on the four train and just go, you know, all different places, like 86th Street. You know, I, I remember, like, taking a four train, and this is, like, back in the days. They had, like, a Gimbals. They had, like, a Gimbals on 86th Street. We used to hit them up for, like, Ocean Pacific, OP. And then I remember down the block, um, they had, like, a Benetton store. They had a Gap store. They had a Crazy Eddie Yo, we used to get crazy, crazy busy up there, like on 86th Street, near like uh, Madison Avenue. Madison Avenue and like near Madison Avenue and Lexington. Yeah, those two areas right there, we used to get crazy busy as far as taking that four train up to um, 86th Street, you know? Um, and just, you know, like just killing the whole area and the whole district as far as all the retail stores, you know? And then, you know, like taking that four train to 59th Street, you know what's on 59th Street, the legendary Bloomingdale's. We got stupid. So yeah, so like that's how the low lives met up every day to go on boosting sprees. You know, like through boosting, we was able to start a fashion revolution. Being young kids, you know, from the hood, from the inner cities, from, from urban America that had heart. You know, it was all about survival for us. Wasn't nobody going to stop us from doing what we had to do to make it and, um, and to thrive, you know, and survive. Because, like, that's what it was about. And, like, and, that, and that's the difference from, like, living in a golden era or surviving a golden era. If you want to, like, compare it to, like, the new millennium. Like, 
you had to be there live in the flesh. Like if you wanted polo, if you wanted money, if you wanted chicks, if you wanted a reputation, if you wanted to be the flyest dude, you wanted cars, you wanted to be um even like a jostler, you wanted to be a drug dealer, like whatever, whatever your hustle was, you had to be active, you had to be live in the flesh. And not only that, you had to be sort of like known, you had to be respected because like you couldn't like be a lob wire or you know, this person that had crazy, crazy stature. But you wasn't respected by other street goons and other representatives that was also getting busy. So, you know, you had to be looked at as like, yo, a threat, a person that's going to respond in a way that wouldn't be, you know, a, you know, it wouldn't be good when that person responds. So you had to be like respected in like that manner.